now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed replaced the telephone in its cradle, sipped his drink, and looked at Emma Peel quizzically. No one there. Baines, I mean. Strange. Dr. Ardmore seems sure that he'd go straight home to his high fire. Hmm. Yes. Dartmouth Park Road. What? Well, that's where he lives. North London, Tufnell Park. Oh. Well, that's very near my party. Tell you what, Steve. Two birds with one stone. I'll call in on Baines on my way. How's that? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. in which John Steed and Emma Peel ponder over the question of who shot poor George Oblique Stroke XR40. John Steed and Emma Peel had been called down to the Heron establishment of the Ministry of Technology to investigate a murderous attack upon one of their personnel, George XR40. George XR-40 was a computer, one of the most advanced in the land. They had found him in a bad way. A 12-bore shotgun had been used at quite close range, and most of George's internal mechanism had caught the blast. Steed's first thought was not so much who had shot at George, but why. Checking up at the establishment, Steed found that the last person to see poor George in full working order, as it were, was a certain Charles Baines, one of the programmers. Baines's evidence could be important, but he didn't answer his phone. He should have been at home. Indeed, he was. He was lying slouched by an easy chair, an upset cup of cocoa seeping into his shirt, mixing with the red stain of blood that spread across his chest. Charles Baines was dead. Charles Baines had been dead for some time, yet he wasn't alone in the room. A young man was searching frantically through the hi-fi equipment, turning out long playing records from their racks, tipping tapes onto the floor, becoming more frantic as the minutes sped by. When Emma Peel walked into the flat and reached out to press the bell, she noticed the door was already open. Mr. Baines! Mr. Baines! Mrs. Peel entered the room, took in the whole confused scene at a glance, and the light went out. The young man attacked. Foolish young man. <coughs> Mrs. Peel threw him across the room. He staggered against the many turntables, clutching at switches which started all sorts of tapes into action. towards the light switch, but the young man had had enough. He bolted through the open door to safety. Light on, and main plug out. Oof. Well, that's a relief. Hello, what's this? As Emma Peel straightened up from removing the main plug in the wainscoting, she noticed a small envelope partly hidden under the carpet. A reel of computer tape, and written on the label XR40. This has to be it. Oh dear, what a mess this flat is. Honestly, Mr. Baines, 
If you could see the state of your hi-fi equipment right now, you'd just die. At dawn, John Steed headed back to the Heron establishment. In a white-tiled room, an emergency operation, which had been delayed due to a shortage of spare parts, was about to begin on George XR40. Due to the complex nature of the computer, it was essential that everything should be sterile. Dr. Ardmore was in charge when Steve arrived. Glass nurse. <clears throat> it is essential that all who touch the patient must wear rubber gloves. The electronic transfusion, you understand? Oh, quite. A switch on the main arteries. Very good, sir. Light a little nearer. Thank you. Oh, it's nasty. We have to open him right up. Buttons. Yes. Get to the heart of the matter. That's better. Clamps. Right. Stand by for soldering. Right. Lecto quarter in. Oh, it's rejecting the replacement. Try again. How's the pulse? A bit weak, sir. I can boost the voltage when you're through connecting up, sir. Almost through. I'll need to open up another three inches. A straight incision about here. Checking on the dial, sir. It's touch and go. The pulse very erratic. You haven't got long, sir. All right, all right, Tobin. I think I can just. What's it? Clap. Swab. Suction tube. Right. Pincers. Screwdriver. I think that's it. All right. Close him up. Touch and go, seat, touch and go. Thank goodness it was George and not one of those digital types. Uh, any chance of a brief word with the patient? What? Good gracious, no. This is only the emergency operation. We still don't know if we can pull him through. A shock to a mechanism as delicate as this. Oh, well, quite, yes, I understand. You'll have to check the memory circuit, sir. Mm? Oh, oh, yes, yes, very well. Uh, switch over to pure AC. Half power to start. Yes, sir. Responding. Pulse rate. Normal. Full power. Right. We are checking on memory now. This should be interesting, Seed. Could be useful. XR should repeat the last thing he was working on. It should count on him in the form of a tape to recall. Uh, from the mouth to the brain. Here, this button. When I press it... Here comes the tape. What does the tape say? Incredible. Read it for yourself. Hmm? Help. 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 Pulse rate. Failing. Can't hold it, sir. Open him up. Quickly, quickly, man. <laughs> electroshock therapy to bring him out of it. You'd better start setting up for it, Tobin. Yes, sir. Deplorable, lamentable. Uh, Dr. Ardmore, this tape... Yes. Uh, after the heartfelt cries for assistance, uh, there's something else here. Look. Help, 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 help. Pele. Hmm? Now, what, what does that mean, a Pele? What's that? Uh, the tape. First help, and then Pele. That's understandable. Sir Wilfred Pele designed George XR40... In times of despair, what could be more natural than for George to remember who created him? Oh, I'm surprised.
surprised in that case that you didn't get in touch with Sir Wilfred immediately. He's on leave, Mr. Steed. We tried to reach him, but apparently he isn't taking any calls. Oh, but surely in George XR40's hour of need... We can but hope to get in touch. Although I doubt very much if even Sir Wilfred could put matters right. Poor George. Poor. Poor George. <laughs> little time after that, Mrs. Peel arrived, clutching the tape that she'd found in Charles Baines' apartment. Her first thoughts, of course, were for poor George. How did the operation go, Steve? Uh, the operation was a success, but the patient was a failure, I'm afraid. Oh, too bad. Ardmore did a good job, but the patient is in a coma. Every part of the mechanism is now defunct. Uh, they're going to try again later with electroshock treatment. I see. What's with Baines? Someone got there first. A young man with a shotgun. I should think in the middle of the third movement. Huh? Oh, high five. Mm, Beethoven's fifth. In the middle of the third movement? Before that dramatic run of lilting chords? Just before. Oh, what a terrible way to go. Cut off in mid-stanza. Right across the arpeggios. But at least we know why he was killed. This tape. Baines used this to program George XR. Ah, then you must stay near the patient, Mrs. Peel. Oh? A bedside vigil, my dear. If they manage to revive George, you can feed him that tape. Where will you be? Did you ever stop to wonder how poor George came into this world? Um, an electronic gooseberry bush? But to be precise, Sir Wilfred Pelly's gooseberry bush. He's on leave, and I'm going to join him. Bye, Mrs. Peel. Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Elmo. <laughs>